What city has four rivers, 15 bridges, the third best airport in the world, three major league teams, the largest inland port in the United States, and attracts nearly four million visitors each year? Would you believe Pittsburgh? For over a century, the city was the unrivaled leader in coal mining, iron, steel, and glass production. But the wealth and work came at a cost. Pollution so bad you could barely distinguish day from night. This whole area, uh, there were a lot of factories and steel mills and so forth. In fact, as, as little as 35 years ago, people used to wear a couple different shirts to work because of the soot and so forth. All that practically is gone right now. Mm -hmm. So the city has gone through an amazing renewal. We've gone through two renaissances. We're on our third renaissance right now. The first renaissance was basically in the center city and got rid of the steel mills and so forth. Uh, the second renaissance happened in the 70s, and we're in the middle of a major third renaissance right now. Today, old churches and historic buildings lie nestled among glass towers and sleek skyscrapers. A legacy of art, architecture, and museums, courtesy of America's first titans of industry. Business rivals like Andrew Carnegie and Henry Phipps, who tried to outdo each other with their philanthropic acts. Carnegie built the Museum of Natural History, its exhibits include the Hall of American Indians and a superb gem collection. But it was originally designed to hold the world's largest dinosaur. What happened was Andrew Carnegie was sitting in his hotel room in New York City and found it the most colossal animal ever found. And he ripped out an article, put a check in the mail and said, buy this for Pittsburgh. Well, the dinosaur wasn't for sale, but he then, f then found an, an expedition out to Wyoming. And that's how we came up and dug up the Plodicus, better known as Dippy. Not to be outdone, Phipps retaliated by building a Victorian glass conservatory to house the largest plant collection that he'd purchased from the 1893 exposition in Chicago. Our visitor's favorite room is the Orchid Room. This collection has been building since 19, probably in the 1920s, and it has continued to grow. We have a miniature orchid collection on display. Uh, it has over 3,000 orchids, and on display at any given time you can see about 100. And in our orchid room, we have over thousands of species for you to look at, and they're always in bloom. The original botanical garden is now home to over 500 colorful and exotic birds. We currently have two sides. One is called the tropical forest side, and this side is the mushroom side. There are smaller exhibits on top of that, and they contain anywhere from South American birds to Asian birds to African birds all around, and they're usually grouped by what type of environment they're in. For an excellent view of the city, ride to the top of Mount Washington on the Duquesne Heights incline, one of two remaining funiculars designed in 1877. Bridges span the rivers Ohio, Allegheny, and Monongahela, dividing the city into neighborhoods. The Golden Triangle, with its magnificent architecture, emerges from the heart of downtown Pittsburgh. Station Square, the former depot of the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad, lies directly below. Getting around is easy. Free downtown subway, multiple bus routes, a color-coded wayfinder system, and on weekends, a free shuttle service between museums. One of the most interesting aspects, I think, of Warhol's work is his wonderful and free use of techniques. So he used silkscreen, he used stenciling, he painted, he drew, he uh, made addition prints. He felt really that there was no limit to what he could do, to the kind of creative process that he could engage in as an artist. And the Andy Warhol Museum is just the place to be on Friday nights during happy hour. As for food, undo your belts and throw away the diet. Pittsburgh does not subscribe to Nouvelle Cuisine. There are a number of elegant gourmet restaurants atop Mount Washington. At night, they come alive with mouth-watering tableside cooking. And there's that view again, with the riverboat casinos of the Gateway Clipper Fleet cruising the waterways. For something more casual, there are brew pubs, including one in the former St. John the Baptist Church. I think now we have five or six brew pubs in the area. Uh, the, the first brew pub was Penn Pilsner, which is which becoming quite popular, and it's, it's, a de, it's a demand now. On Saturday mornings, nearly everyone shops at the Strip. Uh, about
about a thousand pounds a day of biscotti. We also do uh, all the traditional Italian uh, pasticceria fare. So we, we make tortas and cakes and pies and cookies, crostini, little crackers. We do lunches, so we do quiches and pizzas in my big brick oven. We make uh, bread, uh, artisan bread, uh, traditional old school breads, focaccias. Carnegie, Phipps and their cohorts would be pleased to see that Pittsburgh is enjoying yet another renaissance. For more information, visit our website, ontopoftheworld.net.